it's probably not the sugars to blame on its own it's basically energy surplus to blame in the first place The day before the experimental session, participants came in in like 2 p.m. Um, and did like around two hours of cycling in the lab, which involved doing four times eight minute long intervals. And the idea was that though we asked them to kind of replicate the diet and the activity patterns uh, that they is leading uh, into that trial, um, I think there would still be some variations in glycogen content in the muscle and in the liver. By doing this kind of exercise, the idea was that by the end of it, muscle glycogen concentrations would be normalized. So basically the same every single time. And this is based basically on the previous evidence that the more glycogen you have, the more you use. If they had full glycogen stores, for instance, and they were not following our advice on the nutrition, then probably they would have used more glycogen and then the response would have been the same for every single time. And then we gave them the food to take home. Um, so that was standardized. Uh, we gave them rice, um, some protein as well, so that every single time, probably the glycogen concentrations in the muscle were very similar. The last meal was at around 9 p.m. Um, in the evening, um, and then they came in early in the morning, like 7 a.m. I don't really expect yet that the glycogen store would have been topped up, but I would expect uh, the same to happen, even if with normal full day glycogen loading protocols. And why is that so? Because if we like filled up the liver glycogen stores the day before, um, we would still get a a kind of a depletion or like a reduction in liver glycogen stores the next day. So in the morning, 25, 30%. And if we are able to kind of replenish this in the morning to a higher degree, the better it is. So yes, I would expect the same to happen every occasion. You still need quite a large amount of fructose to do that? Or would you be able to use a, a, a lower amount? That's a really good question and I have absolutely no clue. The dose we decided for was, you all know that I'm a fan of 1 to 0.8 ratio of glucose-based carbohydrates versus fructose. But in this case, we went with traditional 2 to 1 ratio. So 2 was rice-based carbohydrates um, and 1 was fructose. And this was kind of in the past shown to affect uh, liver glycogen storage over like a few hours I and mean, that was sufficient to kind of yeah see a difference in a replenishment of liver glycogen stores as opposed to just providing people with glucose only and i don't really know whether like just having some fruits which would be pretty relatively low in fructose but have some fructose or just like adding some honey or some fructose sources would be enough so i'm just speculating here i'd probably say that you need some substantial amounts of fructose just because because you're filling up liver glycogen stores, so you need the material. You just can't have like five grams. That's probably not enough. Uh, you need probably some more fructose uh, because some of the fructose will be converted to like glucose. Some of the fructose will be converted to lactate and some will stay within the liver. So you probably want to have like at least 30 grams probably of fructose to see any um, benefit. In this case, it was two grams per kilo, which is probably uh, 120 grams in total of carbs. And then divided by three is like 40 grams mm -hmm. of fructose. It's kind of difficult like when you want to like do this applied uh, and don't expect the riders or people to consume fructose on its own. It's pretty difficult to get to this ratio. They would need to like consume large amounts of like syrups, um, honey, um, some sugary juices, which are all fine, but just like day after day, perhaps that's not what you really want. And fructose gets a bit of a bad rap, doesn't it, about sort of potentially causing insulin resistance obesity and the like obviously for an athlete that's probably not going to be a major risk how would you feel about that sort of reputation that, that fructose has, has gained it's really funny when we talk about fructose and sugars and carbohydrates in general and we talk about like health people really like say well yeah sugary drinks are super bad fructose especially there is some evidence actually that links fructose consumption to some diseases like obesity, type 2 diabetes, etc., etc. It can be a problem, but we have to always think about the context. What we do with exercise is we kind of lower or even deplete glycogen stores or the store carbohydrate stores within the body. So what we do with post-exercise nutrition or pre-exercise nutrition is 
fill up those stores. And if you're not gaining weight, meaning that your weight is stable, which you probably is um, in any athletes, um, then you basically what you do in day by day, depleting and repleting those stores. So you're not like adding more energy than what you require. On the other hand, people that are consuming sugary drinks and are not active, perhaps have full glycogen stores already, and they just add on the top of that, those carbohydrates. And obviously any energy that is coming into the body that is in excess of what the body can store then causes problems. You just do five days of glycogen loading, 10 grams per kilogram of body mass of carbs per day, you will probably fill out the glycogen stores after two days. In the other three days, you will just be overflowing the body with carbs. So some of the carbs will definitely be oxidized straight away and some will need to be stored in a certain form that is not carbohydrates because the glycogen stores are already full and this is when those bad things happen um, and you start to kind of uh, transform the carbohydrates into fats um, and fructose because it is metabolized within the liver it can cause a mess a bit of a mess there this is when like we don't really want lots of excess sugars or any source of carbohydrates or any source of energy when we don't really want to be gaining weight and become obese so it's probably not the sugars to blame on its own it's basically energy surplus to blame in the first place. Um, and then we have better choices within all those bad choices. So whether we overflow uh, the system with glucose-based carbohydrates or fructose or fats, all are bad. Perhaps fructose is the worst, I don't know. But yeah, this is when like those links and then are then formed. Yeah.